Today's episode is a real dud. I was gonna do a big celebration and do a bunch of fun stuff for the 5,000 subscribers, but then I didn't. Anyways, you could call this a test of loyalty. So, we're gonna do a couple simple fender repairs here, and then we're gonna restore my jacket. And uh, that's about it. So, I hope you enjoy having your time wasted. I've got a uh, bunch of cracks and uh, things going on with this fender here. So you get a little chunk missing and uh, somebody's put a brace from the back side here. Um, and it's uh, really, really cold out so uh, I don't have anything better to do. We just do a quick uh, patch job on this and uh, get it looking a little better. We're going to change my uh, channel name to uh, Carter's uh, Fender Repair because that seems to be all that I do these days, but uh, probably just time lapse most of this. And if there's anything important, uh, we'll talk about it. I'm going to start by removing this uh, brace that they have in the back side, then we'll get this all pulled together and then uh, get out the MIG and start zapping it up. <laughs> Hey, well, we got our homemade brace taken out of here. You can see the fender's all loose and cracky and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, if you were someone who knew what they were doing, you probably uh, just build a new fender bottom. Uh, but we're gonna go about things the wrong way here, and we're just gonna start tacking this all together, and then we'll see what kind of shape we get, and uh, then we'll mess around with it some more, and then we'll struggle, and then we'll give up, and then we'll come back to it, and we'll uh, weld it all together. Should be a good way to spend the uh, evening. So before I go to weld up any holes like this or trim holes or whatever, uh, I like to just take a step bit and uh, drill out the hole a little bit to clean up the edges. And uh, also I found on holes usually the they can start to rust and so the edges will be thin. So if you take a, a drill and drill it the next size up, it just makes that a little bit easier for welding. Okay, so I got this all tacked together. Had to put a little patch in right here. And I drilled uh, holes at the end of uh, most of the cracks. Um, so, we got quite a bit of stuff going on here. So, under normal circumstances, I would probably just build a patch that went up through here to here and just get rid of all of this. Um, however, I decided for the purposes of this video that we try to do this repair as simply as possible and uh, just see if we can do everything wrong and uh, end up with decent results. Um, 
because if you're working in your garage, you might not uh, have uh, the uh, access or abilities or whatever to fabricate a large patch like this. So obviously the simplest option is just to uh, weld this all up. So let's get this thing welded up. Well, it's not great, but it's certainly better than it was. Now, I suppose you're wondering why I didn't just cut this whole area out and patch in a new piece of metal. Uh, well, there's a bit of a story behind that. I actually sold this truck about two weeks ago, and uh, the guy that supposedly bought it lives about five hours away, so I... Uh, sent him a whole bunch of pictures of all the damage and uh, detailed pictures of the truck and what have you and uh, we went back and forth on the phone for a while and agreed on price and uh, I agreed to hold the truck for him without a deposit for two days until he could come pick it up uh, well long story short I ended up holding the truck for a week with no deposit um, Christmas morning, I get a text from the guy and he tells me he's coming to get it. So I told him, you better be here before two o'clock because I'm uh, supposed to be spending time with my family because it's Christmas day. Um, so uh, he gets here at uh, three o'clock and shows up with his uh, brand new $90,000 lifted truck and his fancy enclosed trailer and uh, walks in here and immediately starts complaining about money and uh telling me uh how to do body work so he's uh here for an hour and a half of my time walking around uh telling me uh how to do everything and complaining about money and uh one of the things he was uh telling me is that uh this here fender needed to be replaced the whole fender needed to be replaced because of these cracks here and uh, I sent him pictures of all that, of course, uh, so it's not like he didn't know it wasn't uh, cracked. But uh, he was telling me that this whole fender is garbage because of this, these cracks here, and you couldn't fix that. So, well, maybe he couldn't fix that, but uh, anyways, uh, after an hour and a half, he ended up leaving here without a truck. And uh, I just don't know how uh, some people can have the gall to show up with uh, you know, brand new fancy truck and trailer and uh, start complaining to me about money and whining and all that. Like, uh, I drive a $500 77 Malibu four-door sedan and uh, live in a crappy house. And uh, I have nice clothes though, at least. Anyways, you know, the guy basically wasted like 12 hours of his time driving out here wasting an hour and a half of my time and then uh, driving back so uh, without a truck so uh, 
I just wanted to uh, weld up this crack, basically doing the simplest and fastest way possible, just to prove that it can be done. And uh, I don't know, I'd say this is a usable fender still. Um, this repair took me about an hour and a half, so you kind of do the math there. Uh, the time you spent wasting my time and complaining and whining about money, uh, I fixed this fender. So uh, there's uh, one other fender on the front here that he was also whining about, so we're gonna give that a little attention. I don't know, that looks like a good fender to me, but what do I know? Apparently I don't know anything. So here's the uh, next victim here. He's also trying to tell me that this uh, this can't be fixed. So let's put a little patch in here. So I've had a couple people ask me why I don't use uh, the cut and butt technique for doing smaller patch panels. And uh, while I do like using that for if I'm doing a large panel, like a quarter panel or a door skin or something, and splicing it in, it works well for that. But for these uh, small patches, I find it's a lot faster just to uh, take the piece that I cut out, hammer it so it's flat, and then that becomes my template. And then I can lay it on a piece of metal and then trace around it with my Sharpie. And then I'll cut to this outside line because the Sharpie represents the thickness of my uh, cutoff disc there. So if I cut the patch to this outside line, then the patch will fit this perfectly. I don't have to, shouldn't have to hardly do any trimming. And uh, I only have to cut this out once. So I'm saving on zip disks. And uh, I just find it works a lot better for these smaller patches and it's a lot faster. Uh, another thing I'll mention is uh, whenever you're putting a patch in like this, uh, you can't just weld in a flat piece of metal. It has to have some crown to it. So uh, normally I would, uh, English wheel or planish in uh, some shape, but uh, I've got this uh, patch panel, I think it's a cab corner or something, and it's already uh, it's already got some uh, some curve to it this way and this way, so uh, I should be good there. All I have to do is basically fold the bottom so it's at uh, like a 90 or whatever. So I thought I'd do a quick demonstration here on how to add crown to a panel without uh, English wheel. Now what I say by crown is every panel on a car, unless you're building a Tesla Cybertruck, has curvature both ways. So you can see this trunk lid on my Malibu. It looks pretty flat, right? If you hold a straight edge on it, see it's got curve going this way. And it also has curve going the other way. So, if you just weld a flat piece of metal in here, what's going to happen is it's going to pull everything down with it and you're going to end up with a huge low spot. So it's always important to have the proper amount of crown in your patch panels. You know, just because the panel looks flat, it's not. And you can't just bend it in your hand and fold it one way because it's still going to be flat in the other plane. Got this uh, flat piece of metal here that I cut out. And you can see there's no crown to it that way or that way. It's totally flat. Let's say we want to add some crown to it. We don't have anything squeal or anything fancy. Well, I'll show you how to do it. You've got a dolly here and a body hammer. And we're going to make this panel so it has 
background. So what you want to do is you want to find out where the highest point or the most crown is on whatever panel you're building. And then draw a rectangle or a square or whatever at that point. Now it could be over here or it could be over here or wherever. But for our arguments purposes, we'll just put it in the center. And then from there, we'll work out, we'll draw another rectangle or square and keep working our way out. What we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be stretching the metal using a hammer and dolly. Now I'm gonna start in the center here. I'm gonna use the hammer on dolly technique in the center. And then I'm gonna move my way outwards. And when I go outwards, I'm gonna work all the way across here, including through this center here. And then when I get this area done, I'll move out to here. And again, I'll go across all consistently and evenly, working my way through the center of each square. And what that's gonna do is because we started here, it's gonna to wanna to dome up in the middle and create our highest point here. Now you can see just that small amount of hammering. We've already added a bunch of shape to it, so. Now we're gonna work our way out to this outer square. And again, we're gonna go across through the center that we already hammered. And we're also gonna, each time, we're gonna change direction with our dolly. And that way we can make this as consistent as we possibly can. You can see we're starting to get a pretty good dome there. Panel's got a ton of strength now. So now I'm going to move out to here again, going all the way through. So the key to this is consistency. So um, I was kind of in a rush with this, but uh, you're better off doing lighter hits and just working across evenly, as evenly as you can. And then if you're using a dolly like this, you can use anything. You can use you know, a piece of bar or whatever. Whatever, it really doesn't matter, but important to uh, be consistent and change your direction of travel with each uh, rectangle. If you have a low spot in this, uh, you can just hammer on dolly more in that area to bring it up. Um, again, this is stretching metal, so 
when we have our metal piece that's sandwiched in between here and our hammer, and then you could hear this sound. And what that's doing is it's stretching the metal so the metal head doesn't have anywhere to go. So it's trying to escape out, but it can't. So its only option is to go up. So that's why it's higher here than uh, anywhere else. So you can use this to build basically any panel you want. As long as you got time on your hands. It does take time, but it can be done. Well, this is a really good example of how not to do a patch panel, but uh, it's arguably an improvement over this. So there you go. I'll just slap some primer on here and uh, we'll call that good. just wanted to apologize in advance for what you're about to watch. Well, we're uh, overdue for some uh, jacket restoration here, so... Uh... Let's take a look at this thing and uh, see what we've got to work with.
Okay, well we've got both of our jackets out of the dryer now. Uh, we've got our uh, restoration specimen here and our parts uh, jacket here. And we've got our tools and materials laid out. So uh, quite pleased with how well this actually uh, cleaned up in the wash there. We did notice that our previous restoration uh, attempts here uh, did start to come apart on us a bit, but that's not really a big deal. We'll get that taken care of. Now, the issue that we have here is, uh, as is common with this uh, type of jacket, is we have both sides here have largely gone away on us. And on our parts jacket, we're actually missing the snaps as well. So uh, fortunately, this side uh, still has the snaps intact. So we'll be able to just uh, graft in a section basically here to here. And uh, I think what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna take a piece uh, from the back of this jacket actually, because the back is still uh, in quite good shape. So we should be able to just uh, cut along this seam here take out what we need, and then we'll just uh, patch it right in here. So, uh, let's get started. You mind? Why don't you go sleep on my good jacket? Hmm? What are you doing? Now whenever you're grafting two articles of clothing together, you always want to do a uh, lap joint uh, for strength. So I've got this here uh, section overlapped a couple inches into the uh, original uh, jacket here. And now I'm going to take my uh, duct tape and we're just going to run across that seam and uh, get it all sealed up here. You get uh, the tape on both sides now. This is uh, not the uh, time to spare the duct tape, that's for sure. Let go. Let go. Well, as you can see, we now have the basic structure of the jacket stabilized. However, the uh, duct tape alone uh, isn't going to be enough for a uh, long-term repair. So the next step is we're going to take our drill and we're going to drill a few holes and then we're going to run our uh, zip ties through there and that'll help stitch the, uh, the uh, splice back into the original jacket. We're going to take our drill now and we'll uh, begin drilling our holes for the zip ties. than it uh, appeared in the instructional video that I watched. So uh, we're going to have a quick change of plans here and uh, see if we can come up with something a little better. 
So uh, we've decided to adopt the uh, stab and grab technique here. So we'll just take our uh, knife here and we'll uh, start poking some holes. Should be fun to explain in the emergency room. Now a lot of people will uh... <laughs> So we got our uh, zip ties all in here now uh, I know some of you will say you gotta trim off the excess uh, material off the zip tie there but personally I like to leave them on uh, they kind of whenever I'm doing my uh, jacket repairs they uh, tend to work as curb feelers so I don't uh, bump into stuff so I think that looks pretty sharp eh? So. Now we're gonna move into the uh, preventative maintenance stage of this project. So as you'll notice, uh, this side of the jacket is still largely intact and quite serviceable. However, we do wanna prevent uh, any further deterioration. So now what I like to do in this type of situation, as you can see, we've uh, got kind of an open area here. So we're gonna take our uh, tin foil here and we'll just uh, shove that in there and then uh, we can seal up the edges with the duct tape. Again, this is entirely optional, but I like to go with the tin foil because it keeps the government and the uh, space creatures from getting inside my head. So if you're having those troubles as well, uh, make sure you uh, give the tin foil a try before you seek professional help. So there's the uh, completed patch there. You can see we've got one vertical strip of duct tape and two horizontal. And uh, we just uh, got our tin foil in here as well. All nice and solid now. And uh, we still managed to uh, retain the uh, functionality of this uh, pocket here, so that's really cool. Excellent. So our uh, final step here is to take a little bit of body filler and uh, seal up any of the remaining holes and imperfections. And that should do it there. Now you want to use the uh, water resistant uh, fiberglass filler on these joints here so you can keep the moisture out while you're working. Now you may notice there's a bit of a color mismatch here between our splice and our original jacket. So we're just going to uh, correct that here for you. So I went to the store and got some uh, color matched uh, touch up paint here. You don't want to spare any expense on your jacket restoration. So we'll just uh, blend in some paint in our repair areas. You may notice the color's a little brighter, but that's what you want. Uh, once we get this on, we'll uh, set this out in the sun for a couple days and that'll just uh, fade right into the rest of it. All right, well, we'll uh, come back in a couple days here and we'll have a look at the finished product. I think you're gonna be impressed. Well, thanks for sticking it through to the end. Sorry for wasting your time. Fortunately, until I get this uh, truck out of here, uh, I'm stuck doing little piddly things so we don't have too much uh, crazy metal work going on at the moment. Also wanted to say thanks again to Scott over at uh, Cold War Motors. He uh, gave my channel a shout out a few weeks ago. He's ultimately responsible for me going from like 
500 to 5,000 subscribers in like a month. So thanks again to him. Um, YouTube was also promoting my videos pretty uh, heavily up until about a week ago. Uh, but uh, I guess they decided uh, I'm an undesirable, which is fine. So I guess we're, uh, you know, I think by the time this uh, video hits the uh, air and people watch it, we'll probably be back to zero subscribers, but that's okay too, I guess. Uh, also, thanks to uh, a channel called Wild West Garage. He gave me a shout out, uh, I think, last week. And uh, he's building uh, one of these trucks, uh, 1950, I believe. And uh, he's a pretty talented metal shaper. He's actually hand building all of his patch panels and uh, I know some of you have been complaining that I don't uh, show things in detail or you'd like to see stuff more in detail. Well, on his channel he uh, shows everything he does in detail and he's doing a beautiful job uh, making everything so if you're into metal shaping, uh, probably go check him out. And let's have a look at the completed jacket. Look at that. You said our repair area has blended in. Indistinguishable. So, to all you who said I needed a new jacket, well, what do you have to say now?